Come along with us for another Catalina 22 National Sailing Association cruise, this time October 2023. Our destination, the historic fishing village of McClellanville, some 35 miles north of Charleston. In this first video, we'll meet our fellow cruisers as they rig their boats and launch at Remley Point. We'll sail through Charleston Harbor and motor into the intercoastal waterway to anchor at a halfway point, Capers Island. Our fleet consists of three new designed Catalina 22s, Winging It and Rhapsody in Sea, trailered in from Georgia and Shawnee, home ported at the Cooper River Marina. Once we got the boats and the tow vehicles to the marina, we gathered at the captain's lounge for a potluck dinner and to go over the details for the four-day cruise. The weather forecast promised sunshine, warm Indian summer days, and cool evenings. Winds were light out of the north, so we were in for a lot of motoring up the ICW. The lunar phase was moving towards full moon, which could have a strong effect on the velocity of the currents and the height of the tides. Underway by 9 a.m. and under sail by 9.15, we enjoyed an hour-long sail through Charleston Harbor. The ebb current contributed to our nearly five knots of speed as we sailed by the USS Yorktown at Patriots Point and the ruins of Castle Pinckney. The honor and remember flag was raised on October 16, 2023 to honor more than 1.3 million servicemen and women who had lost their lives during the War on Terror since the bombing of the USS Cole in October of 2000. On the horizon, the Carver Marine tug Mackenzie Rose pulls a 330-foot deck barge filled with scrap into Charleston Harbor. Full sails and content, Rhapsody and Sea tacked about waiting for us to catch up. Suddenly there was something amiss with the head sail on winging it. Still a bit ahead, we saw the sail flapping as she crossed our bow. Meanwhile, Mackenzie Rose was coming up alongside the barge. The Shawnee Keys captain readied the motor and I set down the camera to go topside to drop the main. Though I hadn't planned to leave the camera running, it was, and caught winging it in a close encounter with the tug and barge. Quick recovery and none the worse for wear, the crew secured the headsail and dropped the main as we filed into the cove. <music> Sullivan's Island on the starboard, the ruins of Pitt Street Bridge on the port side. Just ahead, the Ben Sawyer Bridge. The vertical clearance on this day at this particular time was 34 feet. While that's plenty of room for a C-22 like Shawnee to pass under, there was a southbound vessel needing an opening, and so we watched as the swing bridge pivoted open and, made, and we made our way through.
We saw reports of shoaling in the ICW between green marker 119 and 117 in the area of Breach Inlet between the Ben Sawyer and the Isle of Palms connector bridges. We advised staying on the west side of the channel and paid careful attention to the readings on our Hawkeye depth finder. The watermark on the west bank of the ICW was a pretty good indicator of low water, as was the sailing yacht stranded in the channel. We entered the no-wake zone of Goat Island, always curious and carefree, and at this time of year we saw the clever Halloween decorations. Lots of trawlers heading south. Some of these vessels are gracious and elegant. Others, anxious and arrogant. At the northeast end of Isle of Palms is Pine Island, Green Marker, 115. Wish I knew the story behind those hiking boots and the spatula bolted to the pole. On a little split of sand near Dwee's Inlet, we take note of a flock of brown pelicans. One of our favorite birds, I really enjoy watching them. Brown pelican adults are four to five feet long and have a wingspan of six to eight feet, and they weigh just over 10 pounds. There's no mistaking it in flight. Head drawn in, long bill jutting forward, seemingly effortless as they glide above the water. When the brown pelican spies a surface schooling fish, it will dive from a high, as high as 30 feet, pulling its wings in at the last instant and entering the water with a great force. Air sacs under the skin allow them to bob easily on the surface. You know, they eat half their weight in fish per day, and their bills can indeed, as the limerick says, hold more than their belly can. American pelicans are white with black only on the tips of their wings as if they had been dipped in an inkwell. The Birds of America by John J. Alderman found these white pelicans distinct from the European white pelicans and so he named them for America. He describes how they get their food. He said, the white American pelican never descends from on wing upon its prey as is the habit of the brown pelican. And when they are upon rivers, they usually feed along the margin of the water. While thus swimming, you can see their necks extended with their upper mandible only above the water and the lower being laterally extended and ready to receive whatever fish or food may by chance come into their net-like apparatus attached to it. You can almost imagine.
It was just after 2 p.m. when we entered Capers Inlet, about a five-hour transit from the Cooper River Marina. In the past, we have anchored close to the beach so that we could wade in or paddle the dinghy, but the current is flooding at nearly two knots and we can't get the bow pointed into the beach. Cooper River Marina mates, Rick, Rich, and Butch, who happened to be visiting Capers, lent us a hand and eventually we anchored into the current. The distance to the shore and the strong current was going to make rowing our dinghy to the beach a serious challenge. Rhapsody and Sea and Winging It have small motors on their dinghies and each offered to tow us in. Winging It got us to the beach and back. You guys are still up for going to McClellanville even after today's groundings and this and that and everything. Right? Oh yeah, we want to see what happens. We lit the campfire, and roasted hot dogs, and we shared sea stories, old and new, while we watched the sunset in the west and the moon rise over the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs>